ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम माय बाउ टू द लॉर्ड वसुदेवा द भगवद गीता इज प्रोबेबली द डीपेस्ट स्क्रिप्चर इन द वर्ल्ड it doesn't mean that other scriptures are not deep but they touch that depth at points here and there they intersperse them with many stories that are beautiful in themselves for daily life but for the central reality of man where we are today and what we need to do to become what we want to be which is to say happy peaceful and so on this bhagavad gita is an extraordinary scripture it is based on an allegory it is actually a selection from the mahabharata which is one of the great epics of india and uh, it's all allegorical the, uh, the characters even though they existed in history at least the main ones did the underlying part of it is the psychological struggle between the lower the downward moving aspects of the soul and the upward aspiration of the soul the downward moving aspects of ego i should have said the bhagavad gita describes this battle and we must understand from the very beginning that the spiritual path is not an easy path somebody said to me recently all i want is peace she doesn't understand that we must go we must win that peace by conquest it is not something we get by not fighting non violence means much more than simply refusing to fight mahatma gandhi was asked this question once what would you do if somebody came to your village and began shooting everybody he said i'd let him shoot me first that's not enough if he shoots you and then goes on and shoots everyone else there come times when evil must be combated it must be combated on many levels we have penitentiaries for people who need to be confined otherwise they would be a danger to society we have this also in our own nature we have qualities which we can't just relax away from and wish well qualities of anger jealousy passion greed all the usual qualities that pull us downward from our higher aspiration the bhagavad gita is set on this battlefield Kurukshetra is an actual place and it actually was a battle in history but Vedi Vyasa who wrote the Gita wrote it in order to help people to understand that behind the uh, outward things are always these inner realities that we must fight and we must fight them on all levels we must resist evil there's an interesting story because you think of saints as being very Uh, sort of kindly all the time and warm and tender they're not always that way it takes a great deal of strength to find god there's a wonderful story about uh, teresa neumann who was a real saint in uh, bavaria in the last century and when she was a young maiden and young swins would come around courting her she'd take after them with a pitchfork she just what i think yogananda said that she had been mary magdalene in her that one of her last lives and i suppose she just had it with men but the point is that we must have that kind of determination which will win to victory you can't coast your way to victory and uh, the war of kurukshetra is also the battlefield of uh, kurukshetra is also called dharmakshetra dharma means right action and it's the field of right action where the upward moving tendencies in men combat the lower moving tendencies in men we are as it were a whole nation each one of our qualities is like a different citizen it's a fascinating thing to consider how as in any country there are those who want peace and those who don't want peace those who want trouble in any country we must side with those who are on the side of righteousness 
and we must somehow um, b fight against those qualities in ourselves that lead us downhill. It's not an easy battle. It's the toughest battle in the world. It's the only battle that has any final results. Every other battle in the end gives you no satisfaction. You fight your way to become successful. Finally, you, fi finally you achieve that success like one man, Yogananda, met who he had uh, worked. He said, I can't believe it took me 40 years to make my first million dollars. And Master said, and you aren't happy yet? No, I won't be happy until I get 40 million. Well, before he could make his 40 million and relax and be happy, he died of a extreme nervous prostration. You might as well understand that the real battle is how to become peaceful right now. The outward battle for gain, for fame, these things end up with ruined nerves and no satisfaction. Howard Hughes, who was the most wealthy man in the whole world, said one week before he died, he was asked by a newspaper reporter on the phone, are you happy? And Howard Hughes said, no, I can't say that I'm happy. Well, all that money won't make you happy. All that pleasure won't make you happy. All that power won't make you happy. All that fame won't make you happy. Nothing will make you happy, except if you can find that happiness within your own self. There are two things that every human being in the universe, in the world, wants. They want to get, uh, they want to avoid pain, and they want to find happiness. And the worst mafioso, really that's all he wants. He just doesn't know what, he'll, what will give it to him. He thinks mo power or money or revenge or different negative attitudes will attain it for him, but they won't. You must change yourself. You must find that peace within. And when you have found that, then you discover a reason for loving everybody in the world. Because everybody is looking for that happiness. That happiness is finally God. As, Sat as Swami Shankara in India said many hundreds of years ago, that the definition of God is Satchitananda ever-existing, ever-conscious, ever-new bliss. And this is our nature. We came from him. We were made by him. And we were dreamed out of his consciousness. Our goal in life is to reunite ourselves with that bliss. And first we think that we'll find it in the world outside. The real struggle is understanding where it lies, how we can find it, how we can rise above our limitations, and achieve oneness with God. God bless you.